there's something about uh, a vehicle in your life, a car or something. I want to say you want to get a car or you trash your car, something a little puzzling surrounding a car. Be as elaborate as what I just described, but there's something involving. Um, uh, can you help me out on this? Is it something along the lines of your car not working or you lost a car or you have to drive a well, work or something? The, the vehicle I'm driving now, I'm not exactly too fond of. Okay. Because there's a little bit more. Can you tell me a little bit more about what the non fondness is about? Because I feel like there's actually some strong symbolic work going on, but I, I need a little bit more. Uh, a little bit closer to the actual experience. Well, right now it's a, it's a minivan. <laughs> okay, and it's just because it's a minivan, and you're having a Corvette or something. Right, it's got cracks on the windshield too, and so. On. So there's probably a, a bunch of little things that are just not so sharp, right? Mm -hmm. um, not not such an exciting vehicle, we'll say. And. Okay, so um, I'm being told you've asked for a transition of vehicle towards what you know, is commonly known as an upgrade of some sort. Um, and they're wanting you to understand how you're going to get there. And it's really not too complicated concept, but it does take a certain kind of effort that you're probably not used to. That is to, um, when you're with your vehicle, to give attention to it all the ways that you like it. So a way that you can be appreciative about it without lying to yourself. Don't be appreciative that, you know, you've got a windshield and knowing really you'd rather have a non-cracked windshield. You know, don't. don't focus on that, but focus on everything that it's doing well, like everything you got right. It's like being optimistic, okay? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're having an experience with the car, be optimistic. Also give attention to, not just like, you know, my gas mileage is good or something. Just be like, give direct attention when you're driving it through sort of like a little bit like soft praise like, you know, my seats are comfortable, uh, um, you know, I'm glad my clutch is still working and, you know, good, good clutch or something or, you know, the transmission's not out or, um, you know, I, li I like how this gets me from here to there. Uh, I like how I can take a nap in the back if I do a road trip. Uh, I right, like, yeah. I, I like its gas mileage. Uh, you know, I like how it's been been there with me through some, you know, some some tough times and, you know, some uh, some maybe some storms or something like that. It got me through, and I'm I'm glad it has, you know, the kind of maneuverability that's that's worked for me in the past. Uh, maybe not that one because you might focus on the fact that maneuverability is exactly what you want to upgrade. You just say, yeah. I'm glad it hasn't like failed me in maneuverability. I haven't like crashed into cars because you know, my treads are too worn out or something. You know, mm -hmm, like I got definitely. sufficient brakes and this and that. Um, basically, work with all the things that are working, and as you give attention to that versus all the functions that are working, you'll be assured that you'll gain the benefit of having those all in your next vehicle without the potential of dragging with you all the things that you might focus on that you'll have with your next vehicle. Because, honestly, when you have an opportunity to sort of like, you know, rev the engine and sort of take off a bit, notice how you would be in a lot worse situation with that, 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 you know, your car does have a little bit of pickup and, you know, it does feel like you can do a little bit of cornering and this and that. And when you appreciate even those little moments, um, you know, and you may even choose to drive aggressively and, like, you know, drive this car to the limit or something. 
mm-hmm. and um, and appreciate you know its capabilities of, of giving you even those very small experiences like you know relish them I would say and um, you will basically continue to expand that experience you'll to have more of that if that's what you love, if that's what you're giving attention to through indication of your feelings and what you give your attention to with your mind, your mind will be on board with knowing what it likes. And when you're focusing and knowing what, what you like and not giving a lot of air time to what you don't, you're much, much closer to taking that what you're enjoying to the next level. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it may look like, oh, it's turning into a fixer-upper type of thing, where that turns into, like, your own little mini version of the A-Team van or something, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it may turn into that sort of step-by-step process. Um, or it may literally be like, you know what? We're good. We're ready. And uh, we're going to total your car. And then you'll be ready for the next one. It'll be, like, super easy. You'll be like, wow. I have a... An old Camaro uh, you're not using, actually? I heard I didn't have a car, and uh, I wouldn't mind doing a fixer-upper Camaro. You know, why not? That sounds great, <laughs> you know? Right, and, yeah. and things like this start to happen, but you wouldn't have gotten there if you hadn't sort of, like, let go of the wheel, figuratively speaking, and let your guides and your higher self and the broader people that you work with sort of do their job. Because in the end, your mind does have a significant amount of say as to what it does and does not want to experience. More like, um, more like a judge or a criticizer, right? But you mm-hmm. can work that to your advantage by being sort of like, like a lean on not making a situation worse, but making a situation better. Say you're judging a competition between you know, someone who has Down syndrome and someone who's you know genius. You're not about to judge the person with Down syndrome the same way. You're gonna you know you're gonna try to leave some some upward notes you know some some positive take back. You see, right? And that doesn't mean that the person who's already a genius or whatever doesn't deserve the same remarks. They just don't have a, as strong a value. So you're actually creating a an opportunity for a, a, a literal, visible change by kind of sweet talking your car in a couple of ways and, and saying it out loud. Sounds silly. You're communicating with broader consciousness at all points, and actually using your voice makes your expressions more literal, especially when you're alone, because there's nothing like your line to yourself because you're trying to push something in a direction when you know this is silly. This is silly that I'm lying to myself. But you know, I can I can appreciate some optimism here. I can appreciate mm-hmm. things that honestly are appreciable. You know, so, even if it's minute in certain ways. Right. So does this method like work in life in general or it, is it works in specific? life in general. Okay. It does. <laughs> But this one is a good place to exercise because you're going to get some really direct results from it, I'm getting. This one's okay. going to convince your mind that this system and this approach does work. Okay? That's why it's mm-hmm. been brought up. You actually have a lot of energy. We'll say it, a lot of money stocked up, energetic money stocked up and ready for your next uh, vehicle. Okay? It's just being held back by attitude of a mind that focuses a bit too much on pessimism. It's kind of like, you know what? Pessimism is just another way of saying you don't deserve it. Which is not true because manifestation holds no judgment as to what you call for. Only your mind does. You can't have a Corvette. You can have Ferrari if you let yourself believe that you can have it. Lots of things that are self-doubt and all that, and that that doesn't have to be such a big deal. As long as you're giving a direction of thought towards appreciation, making your way towards that Ferrari. 
not look like you're driving a Ferrari for the next six months, but the day that your car is like removed from your life in a way, that's a good sign that you're ready to go the next the next step. Okay, you might notice that in life, people's salaries tend to go up. We'll just say in general. We're not we're not talking necessarily in your story, but we understand that people make more money as they get older, right? They start to you know, generally yeah. start going in that direction. It's more and more related to you entrusting yourself with value directly than sort of like you saying, I need it. Okay? You give yourself value, and it's incremental, but you can change that overnight if you allow yourself. And so it does sometimes look like you know, some sort of leap of faith or something. Like, what am I going to do to believe in myself? You need to keep, you need to entrain your mind. Your mind learns from repetition. Mm -hmm. it's, called, it's like a form of hypnosis. You just keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. You don't even have to believe it. Your mind's going to hear this and say, you know, if you keep saying, I'm awesome every day. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. And... By nature of your body saying, hey, I tell myself I'm awesome. There must be something to it. You can learn from redundant speech patterns like that, funny enough. Especially if you don't say, I'm awesome, and then, wait, no, I'm not an awesome. Or I'm awesome. Right? Right. I don't really mean, I don't really believe that. Don't go to that, I don't really believe that part. Just enjoy the part that says, I'm awesome. And you'll <laughs> literally, your body will convince your mind, hey, wait a second, I am awesome. You're not showing things like only awesome people get. Okay? It's, it's, it, it happens everywhere. You, if you look around, you'll see it. Like it can be like a video game. Maybe you're good at Tetris or something. And you just say, man, I'm awesome because the first time you ever played Tetris, you did really well. And somebody who wasn't so good at it tells you, and you did really well. All it took was that. There was no one else to tell you that you couldn't be awesome or that you weren't good at Tetris. The next thing you know, you're in a Tetris tournament in New York City. And you're like, wait a second, I'm just some guy. Mm -hmm. That just with, I'm awesome once and just ran with it. There. If you listen to stories of Olympians, that's kind of their story a lot of the time. The American ones. Keep telling yourself you're awesome. Don't spend much time listening to other people say you're not. Okay? This idea of deluding yourself is a delusion. Enough. All, of all cases of saying, I'm deluding myself, no, it's diluting. You're diluting yourself when you say you're, dilute, you're, you're delusional. There's no right. need to dilute your energy saying a good thing and backing it up with saying no maybe not really Do you have the excitement to say something or you feel something bubbling up you you really in your case you should let it be said even if there's no one to hear it okay and mm -hmm. you know people call that a positive attitude or whatever in your case your words are well, let's just say your your words, I'm being told, are handcrafted. <clears throat> Sometimes they're very colorful, but they're still handcrafted. And you really get a lot more of your life manifested from your words than you realize. Just your thoughts. You've probably heard that your thoughts do manifest, and, and yes, they do. But in your case... Take the time to say something out loud. You have a little bit of hesitancy. I don't know if you have like stage fright from yourself or something, but it is something that uh, is very visceral. Yourself thirty days to be one of those people that like talks out loud to themselves. Okay, like a total okay. weirdo. You don't have to do it around <laughs> other people. Okay, you don't. Have, that's not. That's not the point. To be the kind of person that talks out loud to themselves in the shower, when they're getting dressed, when they're driving, when they're at work, when they're whatever, okay? 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and listen to yourself as if you're kind of like somebody else talking to you. You know, you just realize you just said something because you sort of blabbed it out. Listen to what you said. Because there's truth in it. Not necessarily truth in the way that, like, uh, you know, I'm awesome. Say something like, um, really like, like Rice Krispies, <laughs> you know? And you're like, that's, what does that do? You know, like, where does that go? Just because I said I like my, my, my Rice Krispies or my cornflakes or something. But you're honest about the fact that you do, okay? Now, someone else will say, even yourself looks at that and they say, so, so what if you like your Rice Krispies? Listen to yourself say it, and you say, you know what? I don't need that attitude. I don't need you back-talking my own talk. I, you do that already. Told. But the innocence of the part of you that things or allows himself to say things. You, you'll have to practice it at first. See what you have to say. You can talk in the mirror. You don't have to talk in the mirror to know that you can hear yourself. Speak your mind literally and listen to it. And see if you don't learn a couple of things about yourself quite aware that you were like. That will bring to the surface uh, subconscious things. Like people have a habitual way of talking. You're probably familiar with this. Where let's just say you're on your phone or something like that and somebody asks you a question and you just sort of answer them. You go back and realize I really wasn't listening but I did give you an answer that was kind of appropriate to who I am. <laughs> You've done that, right? Yeah. And you're like, that's interesting. I just like habitually had a complete sentence to give you even though I almost wasn't thinking about what you were saying at all. I almost don't even know what you said. For somehow mm-hmm. I had a perfect sort of like commentary. This is what we're getting down to, is listening to what your body has a habit of using your mouth for. It's like it's, it's like you're not in charge of your own loudspeaker, okay? So listen a little bit more as to what kind of personality back of your throat versus the personality you'd prefer having say things. You're going to learn something from that. You're going to learn a lot from that, I'm told. Your guides are going to help you say things spontaneously. And, and they're going to bring certain things to light. Like, say you, you know, run over a nail or something. And you get out, and you're like, man, I'm such a, a shit. I can't believe I did that. Listen to the words, and you say, just, just for running over a nail doesn't make me a shit, first of all. I have to say that about myself. I beat myself mm-hmm. up over this. Like, in the literal sense, I didn't deserve a comment like that. If somebody I didn't know came up to me and said, man, you're such a shit, why'd you drive over a nail? I'd be like, that's none of your business. What the hell are you saying? <laughs> you know, I don't need to hear this crap from you. You're, you know, what's the point? And you'll find that you have a subconscious routine doing a little bit of sabotage for you there. So spend at least the next 30 days Give yourself a chance to talk out loud at least once a day. Like if you find it once a day, then say it while you're lying in bed. Okay. okay. And e- even if there's nothing to talk about, just just say words. And you're going to find out that your outer vocabulary does not equal your inner vocabulary. And as you begin to see that, outer vocabulary will begin to shift. It'll change. That's a good thing because you're running on patterns of talking. You're not who you really are. And you know it. And you, you do ask yourself, well, I wonder why I said that. And you don't have to have the answers. You're opening the door to changing how you dictate your world to be because talking is more creating than just your thoughts alone. You know, it's like a form of action, really. 
actions are stronger right. than you know words, and it keeps going that way. But your words, in your case, almost trying to like literally put a, f a foot in your mouth to show you that your words are doing you a disservice. This place okay. where, man, I shouldn't have said that. Good. Realize you shouldn't have said that. And you mm -hmm. can do something about it or just realizing it can be very helpful. You know, mm -hmm. patterns that you follow. Because it goes back into your, you know, it goes back into a long part of your past. It goes back years and years and years of growing up around people that kind of like this to themselves in a way. But that's not who you really are. You're not a product of just learning speech patterns from people around you. You're a product of the choice and potential within you. You deserve to hear what you can say when you're free of uh, talking mindlessly. So just listen to your mindless chatter and it's going to just going to get mm -hmm. better by being under the eye of some scrutiny. A okay. trying thing. It's not an effort thing. Just being under the eye of scrutiny, you'll see yourself a little clearer. Not, not that you need to judge it, but you're definitely going to think a little bit differently about things and maybe how you say them and, and maybe what it really means what you said rather than just what you thought you were saying. Okay. Okay? You can... Um, Give yourself at least a once-a-day pattern of that so that you don't forget that awesome self-teaching tool. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can say in the shower, or you can say, when I get in the car, this is my pattern, this is what I'll do. You can even write little reminders or something. Like, uh, you know, a sticky note on your pillow so when you lay down and put your head against a piece of paper, you're like, oh yeah, right. Or a sticky note in your car on the rearview mirror, oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Give yourself that opportunity. Okay. You're kind of going to hear another part of yourself that, you know, is is really due to start expressing where you come from, more where your heart comes from, and deserves to have opportunity to speak more from a your heart-centered place. Like, almost like there's things you also wish you can say as well lots of things you wish you can say and you don't say them and there's a certain amount of regret which is a certain amount of self-judgment in that and you don't need to be limited by that but you're going to find yourself much more comfortable speaking not your mind in frustration but your mind in which is say higher vibrational ways, more loving ways in general. And um, it's only going to lead to a lot of great things.